this week's lesson is about listening. Hmm, can you relate to this guy? Young man, what are you wearing? You can see it, can you? What? I'm sorry. You really think you could wear that to what? church? I don't know. Well, you're not going to. Why not? Go change now. <laughs> hey, young man, pay attention. Pay, put your phone up. <sighs> pay attention in church. Quit your squirming. Quit. It's uncomfortable. Yo, man. <sighs> Will you buckle up, please? Why? Because I'm asking you. We're fine. Young man. <sighs> Boy, if you don't get yourself buckled. All right, I'm, I'm coming back there. Can we go eat somewhere? We have food at home. I don't want to eat that. Well, that's too bad. That's what we're eating. <sighs> hey, did you take the trash out? Know. Did what? you take the trash out? Yes. Oh, so if I look outside, the trash is out? Okay. Oh, it's like you're going to do it in five don't minutes. Don't do it now. Give me five minutes. I'm just... Now. <sighs> Young man, I'm going to take away the what? iPad. You better watch it. Nah, you probably never met anybody like that in your life. But perhaps you've been that person who just doesn't listen the first time they're told to do something like uh, make your bed, take out the trash, do your homework. I don't know. Have you ever met somebody in your life that just talks way too much? Uh, frankly, they drive you crazy. I mean... Some people, they can talk to a brick wall and they wouldn't notice if you left. And you're like, whoa, man, hey, time's up. Um, can you just please listen to me? You probably have met someone like this or you will meet someone like this in the near future. Um, and you know, it's just not fun when you're trying to talk to someone and they're just simply not listening to you. So how important is listening? Hmm. We got one mouth and two ears. Maybe God's trying to tell us something. Let's look at today's lesson. Today's lesson is called the banana principle. However, I like apples better. So we're going to call it the apple principle. A woman once came to me and told me that she had learned to use the apple principle with her teenage daughter. I wondered, what on earth is the apple principle? She explained. She noticed that her daughter often clammed up when they got into a discussion. The girl just wouldn't share what was really on her heart. One day, the woman got an apple from the kitchen sat beside her daughter and asked a question. While the girl answered, the mother very deliberately bit into the apple and took a bite. After she chewed a piece, she asked another question and took another bite. And so it went through the evening. She found that her daughter opened up a lot about things. What had happened? The mother had made sure she listened after she asked the question. She didn't rush in with a comment or criticism while her daughter was answering. She just listened and chewed and listened and chewed and listened some more. The apple principle simply means take time to listen. Ask and then listen carefully. Jesus was a master at asking questions and patiently listening to the answers people gave. Jesus focused on others. Most people focus on themselves. To them, listening is simply a pause. They can hardly wait for the other person to stop talking so that they can say what's on their minds. They are more interested in unloading their thoughts than really hearing the answer. Here is a vital principle. You can't learn what is in another individual's mind if you do all the talking. The essence of Christianity is concern for others. 
Love allows other people the freedom to share their inmost thoughts and feelings. To love another is to genuinely care. You cannot love me if you do not know me. And you cannot know me if you don't take time to listen to my heart. So grab an apple and ask a question and then bite. And then listen with your heart as well as your ears. You can simply say that the mother and daughter were not communicating with each other. They weren't listening. So what did the mother do? She ate an apple. That sounds kind of simple, but it did help. It's not really an apple or a banana or whatever fruit you're using. Uh, the real thing is stopping from talking and listening. Hmm. I wonder if we can use this principle in our own lives. Like maybe with our mom or our dad or a friend. How can we be like this mother using the apple principle? Let's turn to scripture and let's see what James chapter 1 verse 19 to 20 has to say about this. Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Quick to listen? Yeah, you can definitely do that if you're chewing on one of these. There are three tips I'd like you to take away from this lesson. Let's look at number one. Understanding the importance of listening in relationships. Tip number one, put aside your feelings, prejudice, and arguments, and try to really understand the other person. Number two takeaway, learn some techniques to listen well. Tip number two, focus. Don't daydream, don't let your mind wander. And don't allow yourself to be distracted or jump into the conversation. Tip number three. This is tough. Don't interrupt unless you need just brief clarification or if there's a fire. And tip number four, class, this is probably the most important. Listen and watch for emotions being displayed. What does that mean? Body language. How they sit what they're looking at, their facial expressions. Get this, 93% of the message is communicated in this way. Of course, you have to know when to do these things, and that is gonna take practice. Listening to your friend or a family member, or even a stranger, is a great thing and a great skill to have, because it'll help you, as a Christian, be able to be a service to someone else. But what about listening to God? What if you're facing a decision in life that you really need some answers to and you want to ask God a question? How do you know or how do you listen when God speaks to you? Let's look at scripture. Psalms 27, 11 says, Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path. So if you're asking God to teach you, that means you're willing to listen to him. If you're willing to listen to God, then you're willing to commit to his ways. Proverbs 3, 6. Seek God's will in all you do, and he will show you the path to take. And Acts chapter 24, 16 says, I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. The verses are trying to convey to us is that first we got to make the path in our minds, our thought process towards God clear and straight without distractions of sin or things that contradict his will. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. This is how we get to know the will of God. Listening to God can come with a price because we have these things called emotions. And sometimes 
we just don't feel like doing what we know we have to emotions do. Emotions aren't all bad. I mean, they help us and they're part of us. God made us this way. However, emotions sometimes can get in the way of our decision making That's process. It's important, again, to listen to God's word. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. God usually keeps things pretty simple. Uh, we as humans are the ones who kind of complicate it. He says, love me with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. In conclusion, let's listen to that proverb from an unknown source. We've been given two ears, but only one mouth. So we can listen more. God knew that listening is probably one of the hardest things we can do. But it is one of the most important things we can do as members of the community and members of the body of Christ. Listening, well, it's a skill and it's going to take practice. But practicing this skill will make you successful in school, in your careers, in your family. God's depending on us to be able to listen to the needs of our fellow mankind and especially to listen to his word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for giving us two ears and one mouth so that we may listen with open ears and open hearts, not just to your word, but also to our fellow neighbors and family members who so desperately just want someone to listen to them. Help us, Father, with the help of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you have a great rest of the Sabbath, and we'll see you next week.